Hello, I'm drinking Kier Royale, not because I'm celebrating the death of the person I'm about to talk about. I don't believe anyone should celebrate the death of anyone, however nasty they were. And this is a particularly nasty man. No, I'm drinking Kier Royale because it's New Year's Day. And this is going to be part of a, a New Year's resolution I'm going to propose to you at the end of this video. Right. On the 26th of December, George Blake died. George Blake was a traitor responsible for the death, according to the statement accompanying his sentencing, of 42 people who were working for the British intelligence services behind the Iron Curtain. He was sentenced to 42 years in prison, one year for every agent uh, whose death at the hands of uh, various Soviet spy catchers was attributed to the information he supplied to them. He seemed to have little regard for these deaths. I'm probably misquoting him, but I remember a remark he made in an interview. So I'll be paraphrasing a little bit. It went something like the interviewer asking him if he felt guilty about the deaths of these people. And he responded along the lines of, not at all. They were traitors to their country and deserved everything they got. He managed to squirm out of applying that to himself, by the way, by saying, according to Wikipedia, that he'd never felt British. Hang on. That's it. Um, to betray, you first have to belong. I never belonged. And yet I want to point out something to you, something else he said, which is also in Wikipedia, when he was talking about his conversion to communism, which he put down to the bombing of North Korean villages that he experienced firsthand when he was a prisoner of war there. And this is what he said. It was the relentless bombing of small Korean villages by enormous American flying fortresses. Um, you know, uh, just to look at this, what he's saying is that if you're successful, then you're wrong. The Americans could build enormous flying fortresses that automatically made them wrong. Meanwhile, what they did was save at least South Korea. And there are many South Koreans now who are very, very grateful for that. Anyway, let's carry on uh, because that's not what I uh, wanted to talk about. I want to point this out to you. It made me feel ashamed of belonging to these overpowering, technically superior countries. I felt I was on the wrong side. So he said there that he, he did feel like he belonged to these places. And he used that feeling of belonging to feel ashamed and then justify his uh, spying for the other side. Whereas before he said he didn't belong and used that to justify the fact that he felt no guilt about betraying these uh, people who were working for Britain. There, so let's see, he belongs when he wants to belong and he doesn't belong when he doesn't want to. There's a word for that hypocrisy. The fact is, Blake was born in Holland to a Dutch mother and brought up in Holland, but his father had served in the British Army with some distinction. George was then sent to live with a relative in Cairo, that's in Egypt, but at the time there was a huge cosmopolitan community living in Cairo and Alexandria and George went to an English school there and from there proceeded to Cambridge. So you can say Britain gave him his intellectual and cultural framework. While in Egypt, he probably got some ideas from a close relative who was a communist. So the seeds might have been so there, but sown there, but frankly, that's, that's not an excuse. You get exposed to all sorts of ideas. It doesn't mean to say, uh, even if you take them on board, it doesn't mean to say you have to then spend your time 
uh, getting people who are working for your country shot in the head uh, because you, you're ashamed to be a member of your country. I mean, really, if he was that ashamed, he should have just gone to the Soviet Union and become a worker there, you know, to build the Soviet dream. No. It wasn't that he felt he belonged or he didn't belong. It was that he liked being a spy. And that's the top and bottom of it. He liked the cloak and dagger. And I don't think MI6 with its office job type work, I don't think that was enough cloak and dagger for him. Anyway, look, uh, that's another speculation. Uh, Britain took Blake in, educated him and gave him an identity. Whatever he said about not belonging, he owed the country of Britain at least his allegiance, if not his active participation. And he fluffed that spectacularly. So let's see how the august organs of the news treat the news of his death. Here we have the week. A study in treason, understanding George Blake, the Soviet double agent. So, yeah, he was a Soviet double agent then, was he? He wasn't a British traitor working for Soviet Russia. There's something a bit romantic about the Appalachian double agent, isn't there? It's the cloak and dagger stuff again. It's not quite so bad as the traitor who betrayed the colleagues who trusted him, is it? And then this here, this is from the, uh, the BBC obituary, George Blake. Uh, George Blake's escape from Wormwood Scrubs prison in London uh, was a major embarrassment to the government of Harold Wilson. Blake, convicted of betraying British MI6 agents to the Soviet Union, had completed just five years of a 42-year sentence. Again, he was convicted of betraying, which isn't quite the same as saying he was a traitor, is it? They've softened the blow by describing what he did rather than what he was. I want to add something here for all of Blake's insistence of the morality of the communist system. He was utterly shocked when they dished out a 42-year sentence. He expected much less than that, which means that he knew how much more moral the capitalists were, considering that he also knew all the double agents who were caught by the Soviets got a bullet in the brain after torture in some rancid cellar underneath the Lubyanka. Now, let's see what's next. Um, the Guardian. Oh, yeah. Notorious Cold War double agent dies aged 98. So it says here the former MI6 spy exposed hundreds of Western ag agents, betrayed hundreds of Western agents and settled in the Soviet Union. He's died at the age of 98, it says here. So they call him the former British spy. And I call him the traitor who worked for the Soviet Union. And nobody else is saying that. This is another one from the BBC. George Blake, Soviet Cold War spy and former MI6 officer, dies in Russia. An officer, you see? Not a gentleman. And not a traitor. Where is the word traitor? Um, look at this here. Over nine years, the Soviet spy handed over, so he's a Soviet spy now, not a traitor, uh, handed over information that led to the betrayal of at least 40 MI6 agents in Eastern Europe. So uh, now let's take a look at the, the, the Telegraph. At least they call him infamous here, George Blake, infamous Cold War spy who escaped from prison and fled to Moscow, obituary. But they still refer to him only as a Cold War spy who escaped prison. Uh, again, slightly romantic, swashbuckling image. So not once, even in a paper as conservative as The Telegraph, was this man called a traitor. 
a Soviet spy? Yes. A double agent? Yes. But the most important definition of what he was? No. They skate away from that. Actually, just like other news media skate away from referring to what is going on in Portland, which words I cannot use because otherwise YouTube will slap my wrist. So let's just refer to them as peaceful protests, should we? And people over here in the UK can't refer to groups of men enslaving girls in British towns, but refer to them as groomers. I groom my horse. There's nothing bad about that. And I object to these men being referred to by that same word. And also we can't say they're men of Pakistani heritage. We have to describe them as Asians, don't we? Which, thank goodness, the Sikhs are now making some headway in changing because they're Asians and they're the victims. In other words, we're afraid of using language to describe the world as it is. We can't call George Blake a traitor because it's a value judgment and nobody wants to be thought of as making judgments of other people. Well, there is a, you have to be careful, but there is a line beyond which you can make judgments. You can say somebody is a bad person and is doing evil things, and there are words to describe what they do. Let's make a New Year's resolution along with the celebration. Let's call things as they are, or at least let's not call them something softer so we don't get accused horror of horrors of the ultimate sin of making a value judgment. Oh, and Happy New Year, everyone. Cheers. Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opteryx design or Grambo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.